everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory, and today I'm gonna be sewing up my boys' board short pattern and trying a little different hack where I add um, compression shorts type lining inside the swimsuit to hopefully hopefully prevent some of that uncomfortable chasing chafing. I can't talk today. That my son seems to have so. That is our plan. Hopefully we can accomplish that. I've linked both the boys board short pattern and the girls legging pattern, which is what I'm using to create the compression shorts for the inside. So let me go ahead and get a couple of my shares done here. And then I'll go ahead and show you what I've already done to prepare for this. As in, I've done a bit of the sewing already on these um, board shorts because it's really not about sewing up every part of the shorts so much as it is trying the, to add the compression shorts on the inside and show you how that looks together. So I don't know if you've seen, but there's this Facebook ad for men's um, swimsuit that has these sort of compression sport shorts underneath and it constantly shows up on my Facebook feed. So, and my husband bought a pair similar to that, I think at Kohl's last year. So it's not, this is not a novel idea to add compression shorts um, under a swimsuit, but most kids suits that I've seen don't have that. Now, my, my oldest son has not really liked, um, when I have sewn him shorts because he says it always rubs weird and it can't be the fabric because I'm using absolutely beautiful board short fabric and it actually feels way nicer than like the fabric that I'm on the shorts that I'm buying him from Old Navy or say Target. So um, I don't think it can be the fabric and what we've kind of come up with in the past is I just put no liner in it and that is what worked for him. So I don't know if it's the lining fabric that irritated or what but I'm going I told him I was gonna to try to make him another pair and add sort of shorts underneath okay so you kind of your your boxer briefs if you will underneath um, to see if that is more comfortable so anyway let's see what happens um, So let me go ahead and just do uh, my couple of shares here and you guys can go ahead and say hi let me know what you're up to and um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, yeah just share a couple to a couple pages here if you think this is a hack that you might want to recreate I would love for you to hit share it's a great way for you to be able to find it on your timeline as opposed to having to come back to mine and scroll down through all the posts um, later. So that's a great way for you to be able to find it, as well as you can always just click through um, to the board short pattern and go ahead and pin or save that however you want. I've also given you a link in the description of this video um, for you to find the legging, the summer shorty leggings which is my free girls short legging pattern and what i used actually for this today so um that are those are the two parts of my patterns that i'm mashing together and um, we're gonna see if it works um and hopefully it's a good combo so i know they sell in stores and you guys have seen it um board shorts with sort of the compression leggings underneath my husband has a pair um, i mentioned at the beginning i'm always when i'm scrolling down um facebook i always see this ad i can't even think of what the company is telling me about these um board shorts with sort of the compression shorts underneath so i know it's popular and my husband's got had got some at kohl's that were the same sort of thing so I know it can be I know that you know it's interesting or I mean it's something people want so 
let's see how it goes. Okay, so the actual board shorts take um, more time than I wanted to spend just sewing live for you guys today. Um, so I've already started putting this a little bit together. So let me show you what I've done. So the first thing I did is I actually sewed up the shorts for underneath. And the last time I bought swimsuit lining, it was pretty thick. Actually, let me um, actually just find that and put the link in the comments. So um, I bought swim lining off Amazon and um, it was thicker than the other swim lining that I've purchased in the past, but it's actually perfect for these shorts and it's worked great for the girl swimsuits that I've been sewing too. So it's one that I've liked. So let me see if I can, um, find it on my order here. Yeah. Okay. So it's called fabric lightweight swimwear lining four way stretch. I don't know. I think I would definitely say it's more of a medium weight for sure. Um, than a lightweight because to me, lightweight is like almost like a mesh and this is definitely more like a fabric. So that is why I decided to use it also for these shorts because it's made for swimwear and it is heavy enough that I think it will work sort of for these compression shorts. So I am now, I'm sticking the link to the swim lining that I use right now in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out and this get, will get you exactly what I have. So, okay, so I already cut out, um, the, from the legging pattern, I did lengthen it about two inches because for the girl shorts, it's a pretty short sort of undershort. Um, and I wanted this to maybe not ride up so much on my son while he's swimming. So I lengthened it, but otherwise I used the size chart um, and I cut my son a pair of leggings from the girl's free pattern, okay? So the short ones. So you can see how the back is higher here and hopefully we'll go right into our swimsuit. The other thing that I did was I've already sewn together this side seam and I top stitched it and I added my, po my pocket. And um, I like to put a, the plastic snap on the pocket for the closure. You can also use hook and loop or anything um, or a button like that. And then I also do put two little tiny holes in the bottom of the pocket to let the water drain out. I used really matching. Can you see that? Like in there, really tiny holes. And I use that little circle stitch that's on your sewing machine. So um, I did two of those and I cut those open. So this is the side. Don't you love this fabric? Okay, so this is from the brand new spring line of Raspberry Creek um, board short fabric and I love the paint splatter with the stripes and I think it's really modern and fun and um, my 12 and a half year old loves it okay so I've sewn the side seam and then I actually sewed the back together and I top stitched just with a straight stitch um, this isn't stretchy fabric so you don't need any fancy stitching you can just use your regular sewing machine to top stitch along there but I like that added um, element okay so the things we have to do now is finish sewing the other side of the front of the board shorts and the reason i waited uh, does it say currently unavailable it says free delivery april 1st through 5th on mine susan are you in the u.s or are you somewhere else because it appear, it says it's available for the delivery the first week in April on my page. Can someone else check that swim lining link, please? And see what you get. Mine says 60 inches wide, so you get one yard for $8.99, which I think is a good deal. I mean, I've made a lot already out of it. So anyway, I'd love for someone else to give that check. Because um, I hate to share something that you guys can't can't even access, but it is still available when I'm looking at my Amazon right now. So you guys check on that and get back to me. Um, all right, so here's the other side of the front. And this is part of this design element of the board shorts is to add this curved stripe 
to the other side of the front, all right? So you, so we're gonna, thank you, Nancy. Okay, so I, I don't know, Susan, uh, maybe you're in a different location, Canada or, um, oh, UK, bummer. Okay, so you'll have to just find one that is available in the UK, I'm sorry. I hate that one link doesn't work for all of it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna sew is this stripe on, and then we're going to go ahead and sew it together. And I've got one and a half inch elastic. Um, for the waistband, I have the waistband pieces cut also from this paint splotch fabric. And I have my undershorts, all right? So all those pieces, hopefully we're gonna mash them up and make the cutest, well, I'm making it for uh, an almost teenager. So not cute, super funky, super awesome board shorts that hopefully my son can wear and um, be perfect for the summer. So let's go ahead and um, try to move forward and get on with the next step of these board shorts. So the link to the board shorts will take you over there. Um, I believe ugh, the pattern is in size two through 14. And um, you can check out the measurement guide to see I am the size 14 is actually what I'm making my son right now. So even though he's 12 and a half, he's in the in between the 12 and the 14. So of course I'm gonna make him a little bit larger so that he can wear it longer. Um, so just know if you have a 14 year old, then you know, actually it might not fit. You know, ages are so approximate, you guys know that. Um, but that's the sizing and hopefully we can make a super cute board short here. All right, so I'm gonna grab that front panel. I'm actually gonna move the rest over here. The front panel and we're going to, with right sides together, pin or clip oh I had it upside down I'm like wait a second this is not where we're gonna work okay so <laughs> this is how we want it to go and I actually trimmed off a little bit like an inch on the other one because I think this is way too long um, but I will trim this piece after I get it sewn up so I'm gonna start up here with matching the top and then you're easing together these two opposite curves. Um, and this is probably one of the trickiest things to sew on this whole pattern just because you are easing together these two pieces that go completely the opposite, especially when I get down here to the bottom and it's a little, more direct but um, and so you can always go ahead and trim if this if this pattern is too long again like I said this is the size 14 for my 12 and a half year old and so it is a little bit longer than I think he needs I compared it um, after he left for school I compared it to another pair of swimsuits that he has and those are on the shorter side so I am making this a little bit longer than those and um, but you can always go ahead and trim before or after, so it's up to you. All right, so we're gonna sew that, the front panel together to create kind of that little design element on the front of the swimsuit. And then before we go on, I am going to top stitch along this curve are my paper scissors. I have several little pairs of scissors and I don't know where any of them are at the moment, unfortunately. So, whoops. Okay, so before we move on, I'm going to top stitch. That looks cute. Kind of brings it all together. We're gonna use just the regular, I'm just top stitching today using my normal sewing machine. And I just have increased my stitch length to three when I'm doing the top stitching. I think a slightly longer top stitch um, is a better look. So I usually increase that. 
You could totally do your top stitching with your cover stitch, but I decided that my cover stitch has black thread on it and I was too lazy to change it out. <laughs> and there's really no reason because this is not stretch. Board short fabric has just the tiniest bit of stretch in it, um, but it's really not stretch. So we can definitely use a straight stitch without fear of um, those seams stretching and popping, okay? So there now, you can see the dark blue top stitching on there is that part. So I am going to now sew it. I'm gonna sew the front inseam, uh, or the, not the inseam, the front um, faux fly together on the front of this pattern, okay? So this is an entirely faux fly, but it does have a little bit of extra fabric here because that I think makes it look a little bit more like a real fly than if you only entirely have, um, if you just do it with top stitching and fake your faux fly. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew down the edge of the fly together. And then I think I'm gonna have to sew the rest of it on my sewing machine just because it's too hard. And I'll show you here. How do I not have any scissors? Um, it's too tricky. See, okay. Um, it's too tricky to sew this part right here on my serger. So this notch and this curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew it with a straight stitch and then I'm gonna use my zigzag to finish on my sewing machine here because we need to sew from the top of the bathing suit down to um, the bottom of that curve, which is our front line. And if you, um, Click the link, you will not only find the information on this swimsuit, but you will also see a link to a sew along that I published, I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago. Um, and it details all these, all the steps, even the ones I already did um, in a sew along. So if something I'm doing or you, I already skipped a step that you wanted to see, you can go ahead and check out that sew along for more details on sewing this. So because I couldn't really get in here to finish, and this is fabric that will fray, board short fabric does fray, I'm going to just finish it with a straight stitch and a zigzag, which I will show you right like that. Now, I just looked on my other side and I absolutely just missed the edge of part of this. So let me go ahead and fix that. While I notice that would be a terrible spot to have not sewn fully. <laughs> we don't want that right in the front of your suit. Okay, so now when we open it up, it sort of just looks like, you know, a regular suit front. So in order to make the faux fly, we're going to actually fold over this extra right here, okay? So you're going to take the amount that is from the bottom and go straight up and fold it over I usually like to fold it over, let's see, to the left of the front. Okay, and so you actually, I like that this is open here because I think it gives the faux fly more of a realistic, um, right? So actually there could be a fly there, but there is not. And um, the fold is there, so we actually have that element. Okay, so I'm 
pinning the fly over on the back and then on the front, okay, pinning it over. And I'm thinking I actually want the pin on the right side of the fabric so that um, I can take it out if it gets in the way. And now I am going to stitch. Okay, I'm going to stitch along here, which is where it's the, is, the seam is folded over. Stitch down and curve. Now this faux fly actually has a square shape, but I'm going to round out that corner just because I like the look of that more. And my pin kind of shows me where that corner is going to be. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to curve it over. And this flap will still, I can stick my finger in there, will still be left like this to give that fly appearance even though it's not there. And I will add a double line of stitching. So I'll go back and I'll add a second line here after I finish the first one to give what I hope is a professional stitching look, even though this is not a real fly at all. Okay, I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to do both lines and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay. So stitching quite close to each other. I have done this on my cover stitch before. But like I said, today I decided not to. And then what I'm going to do is at the bottom of my bow fly, I'm going to add a little zigzag. So I'm actually just going to change my stitch because often at the bottom of a fly, you'll see that reinforcement stitching. And then I'm going to continue back to my straight stitch, continue with the top stitching down and I'll show you all this down the center of this seam. So I top stitch the back. So in order to be, to look the same, we'll top stitch the front. Okay, whew, all that. And I clip that top. So there is the faux fly, okay, here. And then you can see I added that reinforcement of the little bit of zigzag right at the bottom, and then I continued the top stitching down to the bottom, okay? So that gives a really nice finish to our front right like that, okay? So beautiful. All right, now the next thing we can do is sew the other side seam up, okay? And then we'll have sort of a circle of our suit here. So I'm going to match the top and sew down to the bottom. And like I mentioned, I think I shortened the back and not that front piece. So um, the front will be a little bit longer, but I'll trim that up when we're finished. And I like using my serger to sew all these Parts because it finishes those seams as well as has a nice double needle and I have suits that my kids have been wearing for two years and they held up great so this one the fabric is great and two I think my stitching is enough um, with this method that I haven't really had any trouble with things popping or coming out so okay there's the front. So what I need to do now is top stitch this side seam. So I'm going to actually fold the seam allowance towards the back to this striped fabric and top stitch along there. And your seam allowance is not super wide when you've used the serger. Oh, the bottom thread is empty, of course. Um, wow, really, really empty. I feel like sometimes it gives me a warning 
earlier than others. Let's see, what do we have in here? Black. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, I'm just, I'm stitching the seam allowance to the back. The seam allowance is narrow because I sewed it with a serger. If you're not sewing with a serger, make sure, of course, that you, um, finish your seam allowance with a zigzag stitch and don't just leave it raw because this board short fabric will fray, unlike swimsuit fabric that does not fray. And then my next project this afternoon that I cut out is to sew my daughter. I should show you the fabric just, okay. I can't even like finish it off. But so this is, like I said, this is from Raspberry Creek board short fabric, but look at this beautiful swim fabric. Ah, love it. So anyway, this is what I'm making my daughter a swimsuit out, both these fabrics. And I just think it's so, so pretty. Their swimsuit fabric is like a, a matte finish, so it's not shiny. Ooh, fade, res fade resistant, I just love it. So I don't even, I don't work for them. They don't even send me free fabric. I buy all my fabric from Raspberry Creek, or much of it, but these two came from there and totally unsolicited plug. All right, so there's the, oh. What's this? I don't know if that bobbin was in right. Let's try again to thread it. Okay, so now we have our shorts. They're looking awesome, right? What fun fabric and design. And the next thing I'm going to do is sew the inseam. So I'm going to match the center and both are top stitched. The center crotch seams. And then go down to the side. And like I said, I have one side of the front that isn't that is a little bit longer. I'm trying my best to match the stripes. You guys know I don't always, I'm not always a very good stripe matcher, but I am trying on this swimsuit to match the stripes. So even here on the under leg, I'm trying. And it requires just a tiny bit of easing in the center. And that's because the curves are you know, slightly different. And this leg matches up perfect because I trimmed both of those sides, unlike the other side, where this one is longer because I didn't trim it. So I will trim that, obviously, before I hem it. I probably will not hem it today or live for you guys because I will want my son to put this on and double check that it's a good length before I have it. So, all right, so sewing up the inseam, trying to be a good straight matcher. Now, I usually do not top stitch this under, um, this inseam but you can if you want to. It just is a little bit trickier to get your machine inside the pant legs. And I'm, people don't really see the inseam as much. So for me, I don't really need the design element. So I will probably just leave it, but just wanna mention that you definitely can do it. Okay, so what fun fabric. There we have, so this side has that side stripe. This side has a pocket with 
snap if you missed the beginning. And I also always put two little holes in the bottom of the pocket to let the water drain out. You can also use like a metal um, grommet, you know, rivet, no, not rivet, grommet if you um, want. Okay, so now it's time to add on the waistband. And if you missed the beginning, I was explaining how my oldest son has not liked the swimsuits that I've made for him in the past recent, sorry, fabric fuzz, um, because we've just had some rubbing issues. So we've been cutting out the lining and I've been buying his swimsuits. So this is I'm another effort, probably my last ditch effort actually, to make him a swimsuit that he likes by adding these kinds of shorts on the inside. So I'm really hoping that this will be comfortable and this is made out of swim lining um, that I bought off Amazon and actually put the link in the comments. So if you're looking for a pretty, you can see how it's called thin swim lining on the Amazon page, but you can see like that's, you can't even really see my face through it. So I would definitely say it's more of a medium weight when I've had swim linings that you can see right through. So uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it a medium weight swim lining. It's white, so it's nice. Obviously, you wouldn't wanna wear this just as pants, um, but under a swimsuit, this is gonna be the perfect, I'm hoping, perfect lining. Um, so what I wanna do is I want to match the back center of the shorts with the back center of my board shorts. Now, the lining is tight sort of compression shorts, so it is definitely smaller than the shorts. So we're going to have to stretch as we put this on, okay? But you can see it, it will stretch to match that. Um, uh, let me think. Okay, so before I do that, I want to double check my waistband width. So let me open these shorts up fully here and lay this waistband, which actually I think is pretty much the right width. It should be. I just always like to check before I sew the waistband into a circle that it is indeed the right size. So I'm going to sew this waistband. It is two pieces, so it has side seams. I did, Kim, I did get my cover stitch back. It's right here. I just decided that because this is woven fabric and not stretchy, that it was just as easy today to um, do all my top stitching on my sewing machine. The waistband, oh, um, these, yes, you're right. <laughs> so for the shorts, the lining, thank you, we would have had seam, which it wouldn't be the end of the world to have seams inside your leggings. That's pretty normal actually when you wear leggings. But yes, for a lining, you do wanna put the wrong sides together so that the inside of your lining is beautiful and the seams are hidden. Thank you. All right, and then I wanna make sure that the legs each tuck down inside the other leg of this. I don't know, for some reason this makes me slightly nervous, but I don't really know why. I don't think I can really mess this up. Famous last words, how could I mess this up? <laughs> right? How could I, how, what could possibly go wrong? I say every time and then I have something go wrong. Okay, so I'm stretching the lining around to fit the top of the waistband and you're gonna use your pins or your clips to attach it. And then 
you have a couple of options. You can either baste this around the top and then add the waistband, or you could add the waistband um, right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, baste the lining on. I think I'll just surge it on um, to make sure it's all in place, and then we'll add. Yes, Lewis. Lois, you are right. We want him to like these. Um, so yes, I'm going to go ahead and just base this on and then we'll add on our waistband and our elastic and we'll take a look and see how cute it is. And I'll show you how I add the waistband that I think is a really simple but totally professional um, and not, not professional, because a professional would actually probably do things way better. I think this makes, my little waistband tip makes them look store-bought, which many people would probably say store-bought is not professional, because store-bought clothes, they take, they take tons of shortcuts when they're making, you know, ready to, ready to wear mass-produced clothes, but that's what my kids want. They want it to look like it was bought in a store, they're not looking for something that looks ultra tailored because that's not what their friends have. So we're just going to make it look like we bought this in a store. And when I go over the fly, I want to make sure that um, I sew down that edge of the fly at the top. Because that will secure that top fly flap. So you can see this actually is bringing it in a little bit, gathering it already, but it's just gonna, so you can, can you, how can, how can we look in there? So you can see in the shorts, we have the legs. Let me see, can I lift up, if I lift up this pant, you can see the legs are there, okay? So I, one thing I should have done, and maybe I'll pick it out, maybe I won't, is because I put the wrong sides together, then the wrong side of the short is actually out, and so my hem is done wrong. So I should have hemmed it to the right side of the shorts because that is what's on the inside. Okay, so a little tip. If you do this, um, hem your shorts opposite of what you think because then it will actually be right on the inside of there. Yes, that makes sense. So my hem is backwards, but the good news is we hope we're not seeing that hem, right? We hope that that's um, hidden under the shorts and isn't seen. So let me feel, I just wanna feel where the, the um, crotch of the leggings is compared to the crotch of the board shorts. So if I'm feeling on the inside here, the Legging stops about an inch above the crotch of the board shorts, which I think is right, because that's gonna stretch a lot, and it's a baggier fit, so it's not gonna be tight. So it doesn't seem like it's really high. We don't want it really low in there. Um, okay, and I love the faux fly. Okay, so now, waistband. We are going to, you're gonna pin or clip with right sides together the waistband to the board short. So we're folding it in half with the wrong sides in and the waistband has two side seams. So you're going to go ahead and start by clipping it to the side seam. Um, if you wanna put in a drawstring, which the directions give instructions for, I'm not on these pair, you would wanna also add the holes for that drawstring now at this point, 
before you sew up your waistband, okay? So if you're gonna do a drawstring, add it now. And then I'm gonna have to stretch out my board shorts again because they've kind of been gathered in by the um, undershorts. Stretch those back out to pin on the waistband. And then as I sew, I will stretch and sew to make it all fit. But once you put the elastic in, it's gonna gather right up anyway, so this isn't doing anything that won't be done later. It just makes it a little bit hmm, interesting right now as I'm trying to fit it all together. Okay, so stretch out the shorts, match the waistband, stretch out the shorts, match the waistband. And there's two layers of the waistband, so make sure that you are clipping both of those and lining those up because we don't want any holes in our waistband when we're finished. Just trying to work my way around here and then we'll see if we come out okay. <laughs> Looks like it's going to fit perfectly once I can get it all stretched out and even. Whew, okay, there's my wrestling match with, <laughs> oh, did someone say it's frozen? I'm sorry. There's my wrestling match with my waistband, but look how great it's gonna look on there. Super fun. We're gonna leave um, a hole at the back to thread the elastic through, and I'm using one and a half inch elastic for a nice wide waistband, because that's my favorite. And that's what the pattern calls for, and that's what the waistband is cut for. So if you are gonna use a more narrow, elastic make sure you adjust your waistband for that okay because the pattern is set for a wide waistband all right so I am now sewing around again around the top of the pants and I'm checking this underneath to make sure that my lining shorts aren't um, I'm not catching anything I shouldn't under here because as I'm stretching you know the shorts the fabric is being pulled so I just want to make sure I'm not sewing anything I actually don't want to be sewing and I'm pulling the fabric to make sure that it is flat and we're not sewing in any puckers as I'm stitching on here. Okay, so just a few things to be checking along the way. But when you've come this far, we don't want to make a mistake now. We're too close. And then when you get around to the back, a couple inch opening here to thread the elastic through. So at this point, I like to flip up my waistband and make sure that I haven't left any holes. There's a lot of um, sort of frayed fabric here, but I seem to have caught all of the actual fabric. So we just have a a mess of threads to pick out, but not, not anything actually missing. All right, so let me get my elastic threading little bodkin. And I pre-cut the elastic. So my son's waist is 27 inches and I've cut the elastic to 25 and a half because it, this is a thin elastic and it will stretch out and actually I'm gonna to top stitch over it so it will stretch even more. So we wanna make sure we start with, it'll be about two inches smaller than his waist, 
by the time I overlap it and stitch it into a circle. So, but I'm starting off with um, an inch and a half shorter at this point for the threading. And it will just help you later on if while you're threading you try not to twist the elastic. It should fit just perfectly into the casing with that one and a half inch elastic. And I'm just, as I'm threading it, trying to keep it straight. Make it easier later on if I don't have weird twists in my elastic. But sometimes it's nearly impossible to keep it all straight. But So I'm gonna to try to do, and then of course, don't pull out the other end of it. Oh, so close. Can I get it back? There it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna overlap and stitch with a zigzag um, the ends of the elastic to create a circle, and then we can pull it back into, oh, wrong presser foot. Pull it back into the casing to really see our elastic waistband. Pull that inside, and now we want to adjust and get our elastic all evened out. Look at how that looks. Awesome. These are great. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is sew this cl hole closed on the waistband. that was on the back of the waistband. Step one to finishing the waistband. Now I'm gonna put a bunch of pins in it because I'm actually gonna top stitch um, a fourth inch from the top and a fourth inch from the bottom of the waistband. So you wanna pull your waistband, tug and pull it until you feel like it's evenly distributed around the, the fabric is evenly distributed around the elastic. Then I'm gonna pin it, the front and the back and the sides, so that that fabric can't slide on the elastic, okay? Thanks, Jane. I hope so. I guess I'm just more concerned about how they will feel rather than, I think he will like them, um, but we'll see. I know, I think it's such a great combo for like a modern boy look, don't you think? I think I love it. All right, we don't need the serger. So a straight stitch, we're going to lengthen it to three again. I'm gonna start in the back and I'm going to, as I sew, I'm gonna pull so I'm not stitching over puckers in the fabric. And I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. So we'll go around the elastic twice and then I'll show you how this makes just a great looking waistband and actually it's pretty easy to sew. So I'm going to use my presser foot as my guide along the top. And remember, you need to, I'm gonna use two hands to pull the fabric. Because I wanna be sewing on flat fabric, not puckered fabric. The elastic will gather that fabric, fabric right back up and it will look puckered, but I don't wanna sew those puckers, okay? I wanna sew flat fabric. I'm just dumping stuff all over. I put my pins right in the middle of the elastic, so I'm able, I'm not sewing over them, I'm just sewing right by them as I stitch along this top. And this stitching, and honestly, if you, even if you're putting in your drawstring, because you're stitching at the top and the bottom, you are totally still able to thread the drawstring through the middle. So this does not affect. Um, if you're doing a drawstring, make sure you thread it after so you don't catch it. But let me sew the bottom row as well, and then I'll, I will just show you what a great 
finished look I think this gets. And again, two hand stretching the fabric to get a nice flat fabric. It's probably, I mean, if this is your first time doing this, I think it's a little bit cumbersome because you're trying to figure out how to keep everything out of the way and how to pull it with both hands. But the finished result is totally worth it. You guys are going to love how it looks. So on both sides, I'm using my, the edge of my presser foot kind of as my guide along the top and the bottom of the waistband to um, make sure I'm sewing mostly straight. And I say mostly straight because, I don't know, sometimes when I'm pulling, things get a little bit off kilter, but we try to keep it as <laughs> straight as possible. Okay, so look at that awesome waistband. Doesn't it look great? It's perfect. And now our board shorts look lovely. Let me step back so you can see. Okay, so there are our super fun shorts pocket with a snap. Snap that back down. And then on the inside, we hopefully Hopefully, my son likes these sort of compression shorts that we have on the inside. I'll have him try them on. I will hem it after he kind of approves the length, but I'm envisioning these as a bit longer board shorts, not super short. But we have, you have this curved panel on the front and then the coordinating waistband. So, and then again, faux fly, but it actually has like, a faux flap. So I think it did a pretty good job on the stripe matching if I do say so myself. Oh, Nancy, you just said the same thing. I don't always, I totally don't always do a good job on the stripe matching, but I think I'm pretty pleased with this one. So there you go. There's a fun board short pattern for you to try and a sewing hack to add, add in some compression shorts. Okay. See what you think. Is this a good option for boys that maybe are more easily irritated or find swimsuits uncomfortable? I'm interested to see what my son says. I'm interested to see what your kids say, if this is a great option. And, and if you're sewing board shorts anyway, why not add in compression shorts rather than a swim lining? It's an easy swap out and something that you can use with um, a free, legging pattern and then whatever sort of board shirt pattern you want. So if you're interested in my board shirt pattern, it is only $3, always, not even on sale. Sizes two to 14 and you can grab it and sew it up. You just saw me walk through many of the steps or you can follow the um, full sew along that's on my website. So there you go, board shorts. I will show you modeled photos later and I hope you have a great rest of your week. So just a note, I'm off next week because we have spring break. So um, we will be adventuring as a family and I'll be back in two weeks with another fun sewing tutorial for you to check out. So that's all for me today. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and I will see you next week. Happy swimsuit sewing, bye.